Now we have a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks for so for having us. Um, I'm Mary from London, and we're a group of I think seven or nine today. Rhonda's also from London. She um, she leads a lot of the worship, and she's been recording like uh, Christian CDs marketing in London. We've also got Sherry and Andrew and Baby and Tommy <laughs> from Washington. London, 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 England. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to join a sermon in St. Mark's Church of Leah as well. Um, in Washington, D.C. Sorry? In Washington. Washington, D.C. What did I say? from St. Mark. Yeah, I'm from St. Mark's in London, England. London, England. We've got a group from St. Mark's in Washington. This, this church, I was, uh, I was the priest in charge on the consecration of this church in 1979, January 1979. It's a whole history. <laughs> so I know all the old people who were there from 77 to 79 and before. But after that, for me, they are considered New Testament. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thank God our church is growing as well. So, and we're in the process of finding a church, which is great, thank God. Um, so we have Sandra and Danny and Uncle. They're from... Um, <laughs> They've been really kind of hosting us for the last um, three or four days, drawing us everyone who joined us today, which is great. Um, and Joanna, my sister, um, and me, and I'm also from St. Mark's, but she works in Egypt, so God is using her in Egypt these days. Um, well, basically, I met Andrew and Sherry whilst I was in Africa last winter. Um, we were doing mission work with Amal with us. Um, and we had in our heart that like, God um, wanted us, because like, I feel like God is working really powerfully in the Coptic Church, like internationally these days. I feel He's doing so much. Like, um, like we recently we've been keeping our doors open to the church every day, and we find English people coming in all the time, curious about the church, and, and just wanting to explore who, who God is, and, um, and even people from other denominations wanting to come and see like what the Coptic Church has to offer. Um, and for our church itself, we like we've been finding um, the youth are getting more into God and really taking God seriously. You can see that in, in the way their lives are changing. Um, so we, we have in our heart that we wanted to, to visit some other Coptic churches um, at this time in North America and Canada to see how God is working in your churches and what we can learn from you guys that we can take back and apply to our, our churches. Um, we and like the London group in England, we we visited some of the European churches over the past couple of years. Just um, meeting the youth there and seeing what they do. Um, so that's been really great. Um, so far we've visited St. Mark's in Washington, which is a, a wonderful church. Um, we visited um, Philadelphia, Connecticut, and Montreal, and you guys today. So basically, are you picking up people on the way? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I guess so. It was, I mean, Leah wasn't originally going to come with us, and she's with us. We had another wonderful girl with us um, for the first couple of days from St. Mark's DC. So if any of you would like to join us, you're very welcome to. <laughs> um, like our tour is carrying on for about two more weeks. Um, we're going to leave Canada, I think, on Tuesday. We're going to Mississauga, um, and then we're going to New York, um, Jersey, New Jersey. I don't know if there's a difference. Um, <laughs> Yesterday we went to a retreat, which wasn't initially in our plan. It was really good. We met a huge group of um, servants from St. Mark's. Saint Mark's. Saint Mark's. Saint Mark's. Saint Mark's. Saint Mark's. Montreal. Montreal. Yeah. Um, so how that would reflect into your back home to your uh, church? Back home change. Um, well, I've been inspired by the way, like, for example, your service with you. It's really beautiful. Yeah. It's a lovely meeting, like, how you, how you let people kind of pray freely at the beginning. That's really good. Um, we picked up, um, for example, the readings that you do. We don't do that in our church. We don't print out readings. In St. Mark's in the D.C., they print out readings on a Sunday. And they print out the schedule for the week as well, which I think is a useful thing. And, and it makes it more welcoming for strangers when they come and they have an idea of what, what's happening in your church and what's happening and during the Sunday liturgy. Um, I don't know if Sherry wanna share. I mean we've picked up so many things. God is teaching us so much. We've just seen that um, so many churches have different gifts and different talents and different ways of bringing up their children, their youth, um, to know Christ and to grow in the church itself and in the in the teachings of the church. And 
So as we've gone along, we've just seen so many different things. Like, you know, in Philadelphia, one thing that um, we learned from them is that they start training their deacons from like three years old. And I kind of saw it here that it seems like you have a lot of young deacons and even older deacons standing with them, guiding them. Um, but they start teaching them like at hand from three years old and putting them in classes for our hands so that the deacons grow knowing and loving the hymns of the church, which is definitely an area we felt we could grow in. Um, and, you know, in Connecticut, we just learned so much about the, the, the love of the servants. There's few servants, but they're amazingly dedicated. Um, and, you know, they travel 45 minutes out of their way on a Saturday night to pick up the kids uh, in a church van so the kids can come to the, to the meetings because their church is different. And a lot of our churches in the States are different from here in the sense that you have a, a church that's somewhat centrally located. Most people travel quite a while to get to the church, you know. Um, in D.C., we have people who travel to the church two hours, and, you know, people who, you know, live, you know, and most people live at least half an hour, 20 minutes to half an hour. And Connecticut's the same way. So just the love of the servants, their willingness to basically sacrifice their entire Saturday to drive around and pick up the kids so the kids can grow and learn um, about the church. So it, it seems that like every church we, we've learned, and those are just examples of different things that the churches are doing that, that um, we can take back home and, and use um, to build up our church. And so we feel like every church really has a gift and really has talents. And, um, and we feel that as a community together, you know, we tend to always work in our separate churches. And maybe, I don't know, not so, maybe not here because you guys have so many churches nearby, but um, so it's nice to share ideas and to be able to take those ideas and um, build, build the, the churches up together. One, one thing that we're doing is actually, um, we're actually putting all this on the web. So we, we take video and we're also going to be putting up our notes and things like that. On a, on a website so that it's not just like we're the only one benefiting from going to visit every church, but it's there as a resource as well. And the website is, uh, is copticlearnshare.wordpress.com. I can write it down for any uh, that wants the website. So we're trying to kind of document this trip as we go and we're, we're hoping to actually do it again and again uh, to the various churches. We're only capturing just a few of the churches in the Northeast of Canada this time. So um, it's been a wonderful trip so far. Thank you guys for being so yeah. welcome. I, I guess one last thing that's been really great is um, the chance to pray together. It's been a huge blessing that we've like, prayed like, almost unceasingly since we've arrived in North America, which is wonderful that like, we've been praying with every church community that we come with. And it's nice to have prayer for us as well, for our churches back home. Because I'm, I'm sure these prayers are not going unheard. What do you do when you're in your uh, service meeting? Uh, in your service uh, meeting, um, in your chair. In our chair. And we have a couple of service meetings. We, we have a prayer meeting, which is just for prayer in the middle of the week um, in London. But I have to say, it's mainly you that go to that one than adults, like parents. Um, we have on Sundays, um, the youth from primary and secondary school separately. But we've started something recently where all of the service, because we have quite a lot of service in our church. Um, our church is very big. Um, so we have, we've been doing I think about once a month or once every two months, the whole, all the servants come together, I think, probably they call it nearly the whole church, um, to the servants, um, and just like pray together, one, one of the, um, one of the groups will share something about how the service is going, for example, the magazine will share um, any updates, any new ideas that they've had, and pray together for it. I mean, the topics which you do in the service meeting, is it related to your service for the classes? Yeah, I mean... Same topics? It, no. No. It's not the same, no. same topics. I mean, usually, they, like, any problem issues they'll share or um, somebody will come and teach about, um, like, emotional problems that children are having, how to deal with that as servants, things like that. Um, I was going to add. Um, so, at St. Mark's GC, um, we kind of really changed the model for elementary service uh, a few years ago and um, and at the time like you know we the service was not going well and the service like the, the leadership of the church was really praying about it and basically they got a vision for basically 
from God that the sermons need to be built first. And um, so the priority kind of shifted to, so the Wednesday meetings, so now we have meetings and they're mandatory. And um, actually, if you don't come to the Wednesday meeting, you can't give a lot of on Sunday um, for, for the elementary. This is my elementary from starting from three years old all the way to junior high. And um, the, the, the reason being that if you're not filled with God, then what, you, what are you giving to the kids? Are you giving yourself? Are you giving your own thoughts? And you know, kids can be totally offended from, not offended like mad, but offended like not, not in love with God or having a wrong image from God if we ourselves are not, you know, really presenting God. We're just, and we were, we were talking about how like, you know, basically we are the ones who are telling them who is God. We're the first people, of, for a lot of them, that are telling who is God. Maybe they are not learning about God at home. Um, and um, so we really have to be very, very careful. Because if we turn them off at a young age, then, you know, and if we present a dry kind of, you know, we're saying the words, but the Holy Spirit is not filling us. And, and they can see, and kids are very, very, very sensitive and observant. Like they can, like, we always look at them and think, oh, they're not as smart as us or whatever, but they can see through people. Like, they have a very strong sense of when someone is authentic or not. So, if we're presenting Christianity in an inauthentic way, we're not living it, um, then this is something that, you know, we, we decided we have to be very strict so that what the people are serving, even, and the, the leadership said, you know, basically, even if it's only three servants or something, but these three servants are really consecrated for God and committed, then God will work through those three servants. It's better that than have, like, and it wasn't like to judge anybody, but basically just it's about the kids and, and the service, you know, what we're supposed to be doing and, and that we have a responsibility before God. So um, the Wednesday meetings that we have are very, I mean, occasionally we'll have something about how to serve, um, like how to understand the kids or how to do a lesson, especially for people who are new. Um, but primarily, it's a spiritual word um, designed to address the life of the sermon. And how, you know, it could be something that's general, like prayer or, or quiet time, or it could be something like, you know, about how to sacrifice in the service or something like that. Um, so it's generally focused on building up the sermons. Um, we also have um, kind of a set of, it was called a contract, and now it's, now we tone it down, call it an agreement. But basically, principle is that if you're serving, you have to agree by certain things. You know, um, you have to be committed to praying twice a day. You have to be committed to uh, weekly liturgies, confessing regularly. Um, you shouldn't be going anywhere. You know, funny. <laughs> um, you know, no dating or anything like that. You know, everything under your father's confession. Just basically so that you are a vessel that God can work with. You know, you are consecrated yourself and. I remember the verse that this whole thing we started, um, the talk that presented all of this um, was the verse that Jesus said, for their sake, for their sake I sanctify myself. And so this is kind of like the theme for us, which is we sanctify ourselves, or, you know, we're not, not that we're perfect, but these are the rules that we hold ourselves to, or these are the standards that we hold ourselves to, and we are striving for that. And so we have, and we have like two um, main, like, servants of the servants, and um, those are also people who you know you can turn to. They will follow up with us. Um, and, and it's been miraculous, actually. Like it's been two years. Like when we first started two years ago, like the service was not going very well at all. Um, but in, in two years, it's really changed a lot. And you know, some servants have left. Um, some of them were just like, no, we're not going to do this. And we're like, okay. But you know, this is the standard that God has set. Um, other people have come. I mean, it's. How, does, how the does this compare with the San Mark in uh, Washington? Because this oh, is, I'm talking about Washington. Washington. This is all Washington, Washington. Washington. Oh, I see. Yeah, I, I just this wanted is, to share about that because that's my, that's what I do. So she was sharing about London, I was sharing about Washington. Do you have something similar to that? Um, yeah, I guess so. I mean, we, we, don't, we don't have a contract. Um, although I think it's not great. <laughs> I think, to be honest with you, I, I feel sometimes we take service really lightly and we forget that like, for example, medical school, you're managing people's lives, you have to train in London for six years. These are people's spiritual lives. This is so vitally important. And the way that you reflect your life, like we were saying about, um, like, being holy and being set apart, like, is my life really reflecting Jesus my day through 
through to Sunday, or is it just Sunday? I'm like, you know, I say nice things in the lesson, but my life doesn't have to reflect him, or I don't read really know him, I don't read the Bible every day and hear from God. I think that's really important for us that you guys do. And, you know, I'm just going to add one thing. Um, you know, I think that, like, at the time, I mean, at first, when it, we first heard this, we were like, wow, that's going to be really hard. Um, but one thing I have to say, I really respect the, the leadership um, for doing that because I think a lot of times we think that, well, it's too, we, we're asking too much from people. Um, but I kind of feel like it's almost like when we say that, it's like we don't trust God. We don't trust that God can provide servants like that, that God can change people and can make, you know, make us be able to live up to that. Um, so, you know, I think I, I really learned that you have to, you know, if God says this is the standard in the Bible, then we have to believe that He can do it, even though we are weak, and even though we do know that people, that human nature is not perfect, but we have to, you know, believe that God can change that, and God can come through instead of lowering the standard on people. I really think it's kind of like lowering the standard on God in a way, and what He can do. Thank you. Do you want this contract to be applied in an article? <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> but I'm ready at the beginning. I mentioned that to you before. <laughs> uh, what do you mean? I mean like, uh, is it difficult that you hold the servants meeting during the week and still servants will show up and uh, push it to the sea? It's, um, it is a challenge. Um, but, you know, and one more thing that I didn't get to say was the, the leaders of the service, are they have an extra meeting. They do a lot. Like, they, the leaders of the service do even more than what the servants do. And I think because, like, they meet separately on Tuesday night. They pray, and they pray a lot for all of us. I know they pray for us so much. Um, and they, they do everything so prayerfully. Um, they plan that meeting, and the meeting is encouraging. It is nourishing for us. Um, we have a chance to pray afterwards too, so it's not hard. I mean, it's very important not to get legalistic about it. I guess is the only thing I would add. It, it's important to know that it's through prayer and through trusting in God. And like, yeah, people miss a meeting every now and then, and sometimes like they don't get to do the last on Sunday. But the the leadership really tries to support the servants in every way. And when I say support, I'm talking not just about prayer, although that's very important. I know they do that. They um, follow up with us one-on-one. -on -one. Like, they outreach us, you know? Like, um, Tosoni Vini is one of the leaders, and she, she sits with almost every one of the servants and, and prays for them, and she calls them, sees how they're doing. If anyone's struggling, there's somewhere they can turn to. So it's not like the servants are like, okay, here's, this is what you have to do, and just figure it out on your own, and you better live up to it, and if you don't, that's it, you're out. Like, they really, really love and care for the servants, um, and they serve and build them. They want to build them. Um, so, it, it's not easy. I didn't mean to make it sound like it was easy. <laughs> also, <laughs> it was really the, the, that them. meeting is after our Wednesday night Bible study. Yeah. So, uh, we encourage all the servants to attend the Wednesday night Bible study at 7 p.m. And then the servants meetings are at 8 p.m. That's true. So, you get, so you, ideally, you're not going to church more than one extra night a week. Or you can go actually up to on Saturday, but one yeah. day during the week. I think part of their mentality, though, is also that... They don't want servants whose only commitment is Sunday. Like teach it like serving is not just teaching a Sunday school lesson. And I think that was kind of part of the change two years ago. Is we don't want you to just be part of this servants, show up on Sunday, talk about something and leave. You know, your commitment is to the lives of these children. And that does require more than Sunday, because if you have 30 kids in your Sunday school class, you can't reach those 30 kids just by giving them a talk on Sunday. So yeah, it is your responsibility to come Wednesday. It's also your responsibility to visit every week, you know, pick a few Outreach. kids and yeah. visit every week. And that's part of the agreement. And if you can't commit to that, then maybe it's not your time to, to do this type of service. There's many other types of service to do. Uh, how far, for example, if you pick in your mind and certainly including uh, how far from Washington is each church? Where do the kids leave or live? No, well, Some of them live the pretty kids. far. Uh, well, the church itself is actually in the suburbs. Um, some people come from a distance. I know at least one person that comes 45 minutes away 
Um, from Rockville. We're kind of spread yeah. out. Ashraf used to come to us from Rockville <laughs> every yeah, Wednesday night. Maryland, which is like a neighboring <laughs> state. <laughs> so people come from all over. Um, and also, just one more thing, just we are not, it's not like everybody's perfect, like, but everybody's striving to, you know, like people might miss a meeting and maybe don't get the lesson, or people might not do an outreach that week, but they're really trying, and they're, like, the servants are all engaged together with each other and also with the leadership, so that, I mean, God is working on the servants just as much as on the kids, and we always say that the service is a chance for us to grow, it's a chance for us to, you know, uh, build ourselves up, you know, instead of, you know, without the service, we would live completely selfish lives, and we wouldn't have a chance to grow and, and see God working and changing us. So, so, so we allow for that. Like we're not like you know, beating people up over. It. Like we allow that. Yeah, there's a mistake, but they work on it. They're trying. They, you know, this is these are the standards that we hold ourselves to. I think that's why we changed it from contract to agreement, so that people wouldn't be confused and, and take it too hard. <laughs> You have, have a, a weekly prayer meeting every Tuesday. Prayer, the, uh, the, the, the servants, like the head servants who are in charge of the Sunday school, they don't have their own class. They have a meeting on Tuesday and they pray for all the servants you in the Sunday the school. Supervisors. Yeah, yes. you can call them the supervisors, yeah. They have, but they have for room. us, we, yeah, what we, what we do, so we meet usually at 8 o'clock right after the Bible study. We'll have a word um, that one of the supervisors will prepare, and then like around 9 o'clock, we start prayer. And we pray, and usually, lots of times we'll split up by groups, by subgroups, so you can pray with the servants that are serving with you. So for, for example, I serve in the pre-K, so all of the pre-K servants, like K3, K4, and K5, will get together. And we might talk a little bit too at that time, just to share, okay, what's going on with the service, we need to pray for this, we need to pray for that, and then we will pray. And it's nice, it really builds also unity on the, the servant level, like between us, like, you know, we're working together, we're laboring together, we're helping each other out, like, somebody needs some help, somebody's struggling in this, in their class, maybe we'll give advice, maybe we'll pray for them. But yeah, prayer is part of it. It's not a separate meeting for the sermons. But the supervisors, they have an extra load. Thank you. So, <laughs> you don't have a sermons meeting on Sunday? It's no. only on Wednesday? No. So we all go home and pass that on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Our Sunday start at 6.30 a.m. So, uh, and go to yeah. all meeting. <laughs> we have, a, we have two liturgies. So yeah. we have the first liturgy at six thirty. A lot of fun. Yeah, and like my like our last service ends probably like one thirty, so it's it's a long day without okay. service. Any other comments? I just have a question about that. At six thirty, you have two Sunday school sessions. No, no, no. We yeah. have one Sunday school, but some people will go to the first liturgy and then go come back for for um, Sunday school. Sunday school is after the second liturgy. What is why at six thirty you have to spell what? Ashe, no. no, 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 6.30 in the morning, morning and we start back here? Morning, morning, Ashe, yeah. Morning, no. Friday night, we have Ashe at like the evening vespers and Tazbah. Saturday night. Saturday, Saturday. 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 Monday, Monday, Saturday, 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 Saturday. And then Sunday, we um, have the matins at 6.30 and the liturgy starts at 7. The good thing is that it's not started two years ago and in the beginning it was probably small and it's something to grow and grow and the concept of service something to grow in individual and big way. Yeah, I mean it, it didn't start out like like we're seeing the fruits now. We also did like a couple of other like I know that the leadership did like all night prayer meetings for us. <laughs> and then they started to invite us and every now and then we'll do an all night prayer meeting also to kind of charge up the service, start at ten. And at five, the So there's a lot of prayer that's in all of About this on preparation, do you prepare this on the right thing? How do you do this? We use, yeah, well, we, um, so we have curriculum that other dioceses have prepared that we use. Actually, one of them is from from Canada. I don't remember which church in Canada. But, um, we use the Southern Press. We use Southern Diocese and we use, we alternate between the grades so that. People kind of have oh, yeah, like the one in Canada that was put, I believe, with the Bunaros. Bunaros way back, uh, some uh, uh, Ruiz. Ruiz, yeah, that's the one. We use that and we use the Southern Diocese. So, like, but we alternate. So, like, K3 will use 
seven days in Cape Coral with Canada. So. Is it up to the same to choose which? Well, they have a, a calendar. So those two curriculums, they have a calendar for every month, you know, do this first week, then this the second week. But we are supposed to prepare a lesson. This is something we started this year. We actually, um, now we prepare a lesson, uh, we write it out. Like we have, like, they, the supervisors gave us kind of a list of, okay, this is what your lesson should consist of. Like memory verse, aim, um, how you're going to introduce the lesson, um, the points you're going to make, the conclusion, and then like some kind of a homework for the kids to take back home and how they're going to practice and apply this. And so we take the lesson that's in the curriculum and we just basically, you know, we pray about it and we read and, and prepare and then we fill out kind of like a sheet of what this lesson's supposed to look like. It's not actually a sheet, but we have to cover all these points. So we do our own and then we actually email it to the supervisors on Friday or, or Saturday noon at the latest. So, and then the supervisors will review the lesson all day on Saturday and give us back comments. Um, or suggestions and so that's one way of them being on top of what's actually being taught and you know giving feedback so um, they have miserable Saturdays those poor people because <laughs> they're reviewing lessons all day <laughs> but I feel like as much as like because they're working so hard when they ask us to work hard like it's not it's not like they're just you know sitting on their couches comfortable like they're they're working with us and I think that their sacrifice and our sacrifice that God honors that and he works through that. You put us all in the Just two words we need, all of us. Seriousness and commitment. Just, this is what we need in ourselves. And uh, I wonder, because you came in the same week that we were speaking about the seriousness. Mm -hmm. Yesterday we spoke about the seriousness and the family meeting and the cottage of uh, George uh, Anthony Cottage. And in the Vespers, in the evening, I spoke also about the seriousness in our spiritual life and the importance of the seriousness. We are very serious to work outside in anything in our study, in our work, in our businesses, in the family, we have to be more serious in serving the Word of God in the Church. This is what we need, and the commitment, and to give priority to our meetings, to our services, to our children, and most of all to our spiritual life, spiritual growth. Otherwise, we will not grow maturely. We are still on the same age the same age, the same level, without growing. To grow means that you have to be committed and to take it serious, serious, very serious, to give priority when you have a meeting and have any other thing, then the meeting is number one. When you have a church and any other, like last week, my friend, some people didn't come to the church and I was, although we had Metropolitan Bishop, the second man in the Coptic Church was with us all week from Friday to Monday. But anyhow, they had uh, the final of the soccer child game with the Europa. Europa. <laughs> I didn't know that. The week after they said to me, and you know what, to be serious, to be honest with you, I didn't come because I want to attend the Spain and the German University. I don't remember what's the name. Can after the literature. Can after the literature. Can but they were preparing by themselves for seven. <laughs> they prepare themselves to the to the meet more than the church. Sometimes. Not everyone. No, no, I'm speaking generally. I'm not accusing anyone, but I'm speaking generally. Generally, we have to be serious in our spiritual life. And if, they need, if anything over that, then the priority is to my spirit. First, to my spirit. I can, uh, I can uh, record the, the, the match or the, uh, yani, see it later, like, yani, watch it later. Like, yani, it's, it's a matter of what's in, really in your heart. What's really in your heart? 
Is it dreaming or not the spirit in the service of God? Or any other thing? Any other thing? Then yeah, we are very happy to hear your experience. We hope to learn. And more than to learn is to live. Because it's very easy to learn. Very easy to have information in your heart, in your mind, and to fill your mind with knowledge. But it's not the spiritual life. Spiritual life is to live what you give. If you give what you don't live, then it's nonsense. It's nothing. If you live and then give, it will be out of your heart, not out of your mind. And the great difference between the two. Thank you very much. And uh, we welcome you. All of us are happy to have you with us here. And uh, we see Abu Nabi today several times. He comes to us and some of our children also go to him from time to time to take him from you <laughs> for some hours. But anyhow, <clears throat> we are happy to have enthusiastic service in our Coptic Church. The Coptic Church is one of the most yeah, impressive and not, not we are, because we are proud of ourselves as Copts. But this is, this is the truth. I tell you something. The lady who was standing here, there was a lady standing here while you were praying. She is most a mere lady coming from Iran. She is an Iranian. And uh, her mother called her from Iran. And she asked her to go to the church to lit a candle because she has a problem in Iran. <laughs> they are both Muslims. But so, yeah, I mean, it's, it, she, she lives nearby here. And this is the first time to see how she asked the permission to get into the church and to lit a candle. So, the Lord revealing in, himself to everyone, everywhere, from Iran to Canada, to lit a candle in a church. So it means a lot to me. We do not recognize the richness that we live in. We are very rich. The others see our richness. But we do not recognize our riches. We have to recognize that. And we have to live that. When we live that, I'm sure that it will be the beginning of the real mission work. The real mission work starts from me. Not from my knowledge, but from my life. When they see me and glorify the Father in God and ask, Who are you? And from here it starts the mission work. Not starts from knowledges, clerical school, uh, studies, no. Not that. Because the disciples were very simple people and when St. Peter spoke, they were taking in their hearts and they said, What do we do? What can we do? Simply. And this is in my mind, in my understanding, in the real mission work. To start from ourselves. Thank you again. God bless you all. Do you have any question? One item? Not for uh, expressing for the Jeep, for the Jeep's convention. Uh,